In the last video, we ended with this slide. We saw a step-by-step -step process we could use to apply the factor theorem to factor polynomials. Our first step was to try values of a until we find a root, and therefore a factor of x minus a. Recall in the example in the last video, we started by guessing values that are easy to check, and got lucky with negative 1. We were then able to factor the cubic down to x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 7, and determine the roots as negative 1, 2, and 7. So in the future, in step 1, are we supposed to just randomly guess at roots until we find one? Maybe not. Maybe there can be a method to our madness. Let's examine the example cubic from the last video, x cubed minus 8x squared plus 5x plus 14, which we found had roots at x equals negative 1, 2, and 7. Humor me and try to determine all the factors of the constant term of the original cubic, the 14. Remember to include both positive and negative factors. Okay, hopefully you came up with something like this. The factors of 14 are plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 7, and plus or minus 14. Compare this list of factors to the roots of the polynomial. See any similarities? All the roots of the polynomial are contained within the list of factors of 14, the constant term of the polynomial. This extends to any polynomial. We call it the rational zeros theorem. If a number is a root of a monic polynomial, then it must also be a factor of the constant term of that polynomial. Monic just meaning that the leading coefficient of the polynomial is 1. You'll see how we can apply the theorem to polynomials with leading coefficients other than 1 in a future video. Let's apply this to a different example. The factor p of x, which is x to the power 4, plus 6x cubed, minus 28x squared, minus 102x, plus 315. Let's try to perform step 1 and guess a root. But let's make educated guesses using our newfound rational zeros theorem. We can start by determining factors of 315. It has factors of plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 7, and so on. These will be enough for now. You won't have to determine all the factors of the constant term every time. Usually, you should start by trying plus or minus 1, since 1 is a factor of every number, and then work your way up the number line. Before checking each new plus or minus pair, ask yourself, is this number a factor of the constant term? Let's put this method into practice and try plus or minus 1. To save time, I won't write out each function evaluation, but feel free to plug and chug on your own. Substituting 1 in for all the x's gives us 192, and substituting negative 1 in for all the x's gives us 384. Since neither 1 nor negative 1 cause the function to evaluate to 0, neither x minus 1 nor x plus 1 are factors of the quartic. Moving up the number line, might as well try 2 and negative 2 now, right? Actually, no. The constant term of our function is 315, which is an odd number. This means 2 is not a factor of the constant term, and therefore, by the rational zero theorem, neither positive nor negative 2 can be a root of our polynomial. Okay, let's try 3 and negative 3, since we know 3 is a factor of the constant term, 315. Substituting 3 in gives us 0. Hooray! This means that 3 is a root, and we found a corresponding factor of x minus 3 not x plus 3. Now, on to step 2, where we divide the original polynomial by the factor we've just found to get a quotient that is 1 degree lower than the original function. Feel free to take this opportunity to practice your long or synthetic division by pausing the video now. Okay, so hopefully you found a quotient of x cubed plus 9x squared minus x minus 105, with the remainder of 0, of course. We can now rewrite the original quartic as the product of this quotient and the factor we found, x minus 3. Note that although the degree of this quotient, 3, is 1 less than the degree of our original function, 4, it is not quadratic, which means degree 2. According to step 3, we should now repeat steps 1 and 2 on the quotient expression until the new quotient is quadratic. Notice that the constant term of our quotient, negative 105, is the constant term of the original function, 315, divided by negative 3, since the quotient came from dividing the original quartic by x minus 3. This means that the two constant terms will share many common factors, including plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3, plus or minus 5, and plus or minus 7. Okay, with those factors in mind, let's go back to step 1, 
and guess a root of x cubed plus 9x squared minus x minus 105, which is the quotient cubic. We should try plus or minus 1 again, right? But hold on. If neither 1 nor negative 1 were roots of the original quartic, meaning that neither x minus 1 nor x plus 1 were factors of the quartic, is it possible that either x minus 1 or x plus 1 are factors of the quotient cubic we found from dividing the original quartic by its factor of x minus 3? It's actually not possible. They cannot be factors of the quotient. If x minus 1 or x plus 1 were factors of the quotient cubic, they would have to also be factors of the original quartic. So we won't test 1 or negative 1. Should we try 2 or negative 2? Again, no, for the same reason we didn't do 1 or negative 1, but also because 2 is not a factor of the new constant term, negative 105. Now we ask, do we try 3 and negative 3? 3 is a factor of negative 105, but since we already tried positive 3 on the original quartic and it was a root, should we bother to try it again on the quotient cubic, or just move on to negative 3? This is an important point. Yes, we should try positive 3. It's possible that the original quartic has a factor of x minus 3 squared, meaning that x minus 3 could be a factor of the quotient cubic. So trying 3 in our quotient cubic, we actually do get 0, meaning that x minus 3 is a factor of the quotient cubic, and it will appear as a factor twice in our factorization of the original quartic. On to step 2, we'll divide the cubic by the factor we just found, x minus 3. Again, I'll let you use this opportunity to practice your polynomial division, so feel free to pause the video now and attempt this. Hopefully, you came out with a quotient of x squared plus 12x plus 35, with a remainder of 0, of course. So we can rewrite the cubic as the product of this quotient and the factor x minus 3. Since this new quotient is quadratic, step 3 is not necessary and we can move right to step 4, which is to factor the quadratic. Again, I encourage you to pause the video and try this yourself now. So the quadratic factors nicely down to x plus 5 times x plus 7. With that, we have actually fully factored the quartic. We can rewrite the original quartic, p of x, as the product of all the factors we found, remembering that x minus 3 appears as a factor twice. Feel free to pause the video and look over what we've done before I summarize the main points for you on the next slide. What I want you to take away from this video is the rational zeros theorem. If a number is a root of a monic polynomial, then it must also be a factor of the constant term of that polynomial. This means that in step 1 of our process for factoring polynomials, only consider a plus or minus pair of root values if the potential root is a factor of the constant term. The other thing I want you to take away from this video is that when reapplying steps 1 and 2 to a quotient according to step 3, remember that you don't need to test potential roots that you've already tested if they failed the first time. If they were successful the first time, make sure you test them again because, as you saw in this video, a given factor can appear twice in the factorization of a polynomial. That's all for this video. Remember these points, and you'll be A-OK. -okay.